Hi, this is Niklas from BitSquid, and in this tutorial I'm going to give an introduction to our character animation system. Now the character animation system is a pretty complex system, so I won't be able to go into great depth, but it will give you a short overview of the system and give you an idea of how to get started with doing character animations. Uh, now one important thing to note is that we actually have multiple animation systems in the BitSquid engine. So we have a simpler animation system that we simply call the simple animation system, uh, which is used for animating uh, stuff like inanimate objects, things like doors, uh, turrets, uh, guns, and other similar things, where you just basically export an animation clip from your DCC tool and just play it uh, in the game uh, to a certain in a certain time range. Uh, then we have our more advanced animation system, which is used mainly for character animations, and that's a system complete with a state machine, uh, complete with animation blending, uh, multiple layers, and so on. And it's this more advanced system that I will be focusing on in this tutorial. So if you open up the BitSquid Tool Center, you see that we actually have two different animation tools here. You have one tool called the Animation Manager and a separate tool called the State Machine Editor. Uh, the Animation Manager, which is the tool that I'm going to show first, is used to manage animation clips and control compression settings for those clips. Uh, and the way you do that is that you create a set of animations. This is just a bunch of animations that you want to manage together. So typically it's all the animations for a particular character. Uh, and then you can check here for each animation uh, how long it is, uh, what the size is, when the animation is compressed, and the final compressed size on the disk. As you can see from these numbers here, we do pretty aggressive compression on the animations in order to save memory for memory-limited platforms. So a source animation that's on the order of one megabyte can compress down to 13k using our compression methods. Uh, now this works fine in most cases, but in some cases uh, you may want to check the quality of the animation and check that uh, you get the quality you want with the animation settings you're using. So to use that you can double click on any one of these animations. Let me just pick one run animation for example. You can double click it and it, the animation will be opened in a preview window or you have a timeline control here where you can play the animation. You can free flight around and check that the animation looks okay. Uh, if you want to, you can uh, change the speed here, so you can drop it down to something like 5th real time. That's a bit easier to see if something is not acceptable in terms of quality here. And if you find something that you're not satisfied with, you can go back into the animation editor and change the compression settings so that you use slightly more memory in order to have a better quality animation. Now, in this, uh, in this timeline view here, you can also set up events. So, if we double click on one of the markers here, we can see that... Uh, let's pick the other one. Let's put this one, for example. You can see that this is actually a trigger, uh, and which has a name connected to it. And this means that when the animation hit this point, uh, this uh, event will be triggered in flow. Uh, in the flow, no, the flow script for this unit. So this means that you can use flow to set up actions that should happen in, at certain points in the animation. For example, footstep sounds, footstep decals, um, footstep effects, other things that should be tied to particular points on the, in the animation. You can set that up with flow. Uh, there's another type of marker here, uh, which I won't go into much detail, I'll just show it and that's something called a beat. So a beat is a certain point in an animation that can be matched up with a similar point in another animation when you blend between animations. So here we have a beat called right foot, which gets triggered whenever the right foot is down. 
So I could blend this to another animation that also has a right foot beat. And I could set the blend up, the transition between those animations, I could set that up so that the beats are matched. And that means that it will blend over to the other animation at a point where both animations have the right foot down, which means you get a very natural uh, transition between these two animations, rather than just uh, blending aggressively between them. Uh, so here you can see how you control the position and rotation tolerance for the compression here. And you can also set that up on a per bone basis. Uh, but that's a quick overview of the of the animation manager. You just add all the animations that you want to deal with to an animation set like this and then manipulate their compression settings. So let's look at the unit editor next. So let's uh, start up the unit editor and open the character that we're working on at the moment. Uh, that's the one called the character called character. And uh, you see that the unit editor has a tab called animation here. And that's here because uh, we've set up this character to use the animation state machine. Uh, so as you can see here, it has a field where we specify the name of the state machine. You can actually have multiple characters sharing the same state machine if you have different models but the, that are animated in the same way. We could share the same state machine. Um, here we have a list of the bones in the, in the character. These are the nodes in the character scene graph that can be animated through animations. And there are, you can apply loading to this as well, so that at a, at a certain distance only particular bones are animated. Uh, but here you would drag in all the all the nodes here that you want to be you want to be animated. If you forget to add something here, it, it just won't show up in the animation. You can put it in later and and make it animated. So this is what you need to do to set up a, an animated character. Uh, by the way, everything here is done in the uh, animation sample. It's one of the samples that are distributed with the engine. So if you want to check this out and follow this uh, tutorial, you can just open that sample and you will find all the data. So to create the define the state machine behavior for this character, we go into the state machine editor. From here. And I'll open the state machine for the character we're working on. Now, this the state machine we're using for animations is a very uh, traditional based state machine. You have a number of states. Each stage represents a particular uh, particular animation that the character is in, and then we have transition between those states. And these transitions are triggered by events. So if the character is here in the on-ground state and uh, he gets the ragdoll event, he will transition to the ragdoll state. Similarly, if he's in the ragdoll event and in the ragdoll state and gets sent the clear event, he will transition to the no NM state. Uh, so, and these events, uh, which are listed here, uh, these events are, are sent by the script or by flow. So an external program always controls the character by sending events of these types. Uh, an external program can also set the value of variables to control, for example, the speed of particular animations uh, in these states. Now, if you click on the transition here, you can see the parameters for the transition. You can see, for example, if it what kind of blend time it should use. Here it's set to 0 0.2 seconds, so it will blend over uh, to the ragdoll state in 0.2 seconds. Uh, it's also here that you can set up beat transitions so that you get this beat matching that I talked about before. Uh, if you click on a state, you can see the settings for that particular state. Here you can see that the state uh, uses a ragdoll. Uh, if you click on one of the other states here, uh, we can see this is a state, this is actually an empty state, a state where there is no animation at all. Uh, so the character goes into the T-pose. 
Uh, this yellow one here is a bit more interesting. Uh, this actually represents a template state. And a template state is a state that contains other substates. So this is actually a, a hierarchical state machine. So we can double click this uh, template state to go into that state and see, see what happens there. And if we double click it, we see that this ground state actually consists of two substates. Uh, one called unarmed and one called revolver. And there are also transitions between these states. So if the character is in the unarmed state and gets sent the revolver equipped event, it will transition to the revolver state. Similarly, it will go from the revolver state to the unarmed state on an event called revolver unequip. And as we can see, both these states are also template states. So we can dig one level further. For example, we can double click on the unarmed state and see what happens there. And as you can see here, uh, this unarmed state has two substates, one called idle and one called new. Uh, this here is a uh, link to the unarmed state, so this actually represents the state at the, at the level above us, uh, which means that this represents all the states, all the states below it. So if we're in any of these states and we get the idle event, we will transition to the idle state. If we get the move event, we will transition to the move state. Now the idle state here, it's an uh, ordinary animation state. It plays a, sing a single animation uh, with this name. This is one of the animations that we have in the animation manager earlier. And this animation is also set to loop, so it will play, play in a loop. Uh, then we have another state here, the move state, uh, which is actually a blend state. As you can see, it's set up to play a mix of different base animations based on the value of variables. So if the characters, based on the character's move speed, it will select either, either walk, jog, or run animation. And based on the rotation speed, it will either play a straightforward animation or one leaning left or leaning right. And all these, some, all these animations will be mixed together to produce final animation for this state. So, if we go back here, you see that everything, everything we're doing here happens uh, in a layer called base. So layers is another concept, another concept of this state machine. Uh, when you have multiple layers in a state machine, the higher levels will override what is happening in the lower layers. It will actually be as if if you are painting with an opacity on top of the lower layers. Uh, and you can use this to make higher layers that override certain bones in the lower layers of the animation state machine. So for example, you could make a base animation, an animation in the base layer that is just running. And then you could add an animation in uh, the higher layer that controlled, for example, the weapon hand and could form it into a revolver shape or uh, or a normal shape. And that is actually what is done by this weapon hand layer here. As you can see, it can be in two states. Either it has no animation at all, uh, which means that in that case, we will see the base animation uh, below this layer. So the base animation will shine true. Or we can be in the called idle state. Uh, if we get sent one of these events, in which case we'll play a special animation called weapon called idle. And we will play that on a blend set called right hand weapon. Now the blend set determines which bones in the character this animation will affect. So this means that for the bones in the right hand, uh, this layer will override whatever happens in the base layer. So we won't see what the base layer is doing with the right hand. Instead, instead we will see the revolver shape uh, that this, uh, this layer makes of the right hand. Uh, there's an additional layer here called partial which is used for a partial raggle effect. So this layer, if it gets sent the event raggle left arm, it goes into this state, which uh, runs a raggle on just the left arm. So we have a partial, we have support for partial raggles in our animation system. And it also uses a blend set, which only affects the left arm, which means that uh, when this state, when we enter this state, uh, this layer will take over, so we won't see what the base layer is doing to the left arm. Instead, 
uh, the left arm will wrangle while the base layer keeps controlling the rest of the bones. So to actually, to actually see what this looks like, there is a preview node in the animation state machine uh, that we can go into by clicking preview here. And we get preview, you can see here is the character and he's in the basic idle state that he starts in. Uh, we can also bring in, here we can highlight the skeleton for example, if you want to see a little bit more detail into what is happening. There's also something here called um, the motion mixer. Uh, the motion mixer allows us to test out this animation state machine by sending events to it and setting the value of variables. So we can see what would what will happen in the game when these events get triggered. So for example we can trigger this move event and as you can see it will transition to the move animation and here we can use these variables that I've talked about before to control the move speed and as you can see it's smoothly blending between the fast running animation and the slower walk animation and we can use this rotation speed variable uh, to control how the character leads. And as you see, it's a, still a completely smooth blend, no matter what I set, set these variables to. Uh, we can trigger things like uh, equipping the revolver and aiming. As you can see the character now has, has up his aim and the, this uh, revolver layer has taken over the control of this hand. And unequip it and I get back to the base animation. I can also try this ragdoll event, uh, ragdoll just the left arm. As you can see, now the, the rest of the bones of the character are performing the normal walk animation while the, while the left arm here is completely controlled by physics and being ragdoll. So there's, there's a lot to learn when it comes to the, uh, the animation capabilities of the Bitsquid engine, but uh, there is good documentation that you can find in the high-level docs here in the tool center. If you go into system guides animation, uh, there's pretty good documentation of all these concepts. Uh, it takes a while to get used to all this, but uh, once you've understood everything, there is, you can do quite a lot of things with it. So that's all I wanted to show today, so thank you for your attention.